Hey, what's up, guys? I just wanted to give you guys a quick uh, info, just like a, just for a quick second, right before you uh, watch this tutorial. I wanted to let you know that during this video, for the first time, I made it so that it, every time I press certain keys on my keyboard, such as shortcuts in Photoshop, uh, they'll show up on screen. The only difference is that since I have a Mac, uh, they'll be using Mac keys, so it'll have Command then the letter. So just remember that the command is uh, equivalent to control on PC. So whenever you see uh, any shortcuts that I use, just use control plus the letter that you see on the screen. So let me know if you want me to continue using this. It's just something that I decided to integrate for the people that uh, didn't hear me well enough or didn't understand what I said during the video. And yeah, so if you want me to keep using it, let me know. And if not, tell me as well. I always like the feedback. Enjoy the tutorial. Peace. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Akatix here. Uh, sorry for the inactivity uh, as of uh, the past few weeks. I mean, I've just been taking a break from graphics, trying to take my mind off the whole scene, and I've been enjoying I've been enjoying my time off. But uh, as my welcome back video and my one year anniversary uh, anniversary, excuse me, I can't speak right now. Doing graphics, it's been a full year now, and uh, at the end of this video or actually most likely the next upload I'm gonna have a quick little montage of my first backgrounds which is kinda of funny because it's cool to see how I've progressed uh, in one year so yeah so in this tutorial uh, I'm gonna be covering something that has been extremely requested which is how to make logos in Photoshop so first things first you're just gonna open up your Photoshop and you're just gonna start something new so usually I just go with the normal 800 pixels by 800 pixels which is the default uh, avatar size so for your YouTube logo and or Skype logo this is the size you need to make it so just make it 800 pixels by 800 pixels and there you go you have a nice uh, canvas that you can work on now so first things first you wanna fill the background so make another layer click on the on the bottom one of the two and then make sure your bottom color is white and uh, or a gray I recommend a light color and then just do a uh, command or control backspace and essentially what that does is it fills the back color so control backspace uh, fills the, the back color and then alt backspace does the front color so as you can see I'm just flipping through these two anyways let's go on to uh, let's start off, well basically what I do is I use shapes. So I use the rectangle tool which is right here, it's uh, one of the last tools on your toolbar, right? And uh, it's very simple actually. Make sure the fill is on black, I mean it depends on whichever color you have as your your first color. I, t I like to just use black and uh, don't mess with any of anything else. And then essentially uh, I usually like to use like letter based logos I'm better at those uh, concept logos I'm not I'm not really uh, very creative with those I just prefer to um, do letter based which actually look better like I love the look of my logo it's just uh, really original in my opinion so let's say for example uh, your logo uh, is for I don't know your name begins with an R so I would just begin using the, the basic shapes so you're just gonna start I would say actually that was my mistake you want to make sure you keep the same width for all your segments so you're just gonna duplicate the same rectangle you do that by uh, control J and control J that's how you can just duplicate your shape so I would just make the basic shape of your thing make sure have them overlap later on you can fix up the, uh, the dimensions and stuff like that the lengths but let's just uh, oh yeah let's just make a basic idea of what we want it to look like so let's say this I am pretty satisfied with this uh, let me just fix that up there we go and we have an idea of what this is gonna look like let me just pull that down so there we go we have a basic shape put it in the center of our canvas you're gonna select all the rectangles hit control E and essentially that merges all your layers all the layers that you have selected 
and then you're gonna you're gonna see that since it's still uh, in the the mode of the rectangle like the tool that we're using it's still gonna point out some certain sectors and you don't want that so you're just gonna right click on the layer and then go to rasterize layer and there you go so now you have a still image of uh, basic shape of your logo essentially from here it's very simple uh, it's just a matter of your own creativity I tend to keep things simple so for example I like to these these uh, extra lengths right here this, this I don't want so you're just gonna wanna click try to get it as close to the line as you can hold shift if not you see it'll be all it'll be hard to get it perfect if you hold shift it snaps it directly into a line and same thing with if you get it close to a diagonal and then horizontal so yeah and then you're just gonna wanna click and then just cut that out if you double click that uh, like if, let me see if I can show that again you click here you hold shift you go down whoa that's a bit too much click again and then if you uh, double click now it'll automatically finish up the selection and then you're just gonna hit delete on your keyboard and just like that you cut off the useless part you don't want then let's say for example you don't like the shape of this so uh, I don't know you're just gonna cut off one of the one of the corners like that and you're gonna do the same thing on this side uh, I would recommend sticking to one style so if you're gonna have everything be nice and pointy like that I would keep it that way so for example if you see that this isn't pointy enough you can just finish it up yourself by uh, putting more or less the shape let's see something like that and then since my foreground color is black I do alt delete and it fills that in for me and then I'm just gonna cut cut this part right off that was a fail so like that and uh, let's say I want this to be indented a bit into my column right here so I would do something like that, no, let's see if I can actually get this to work, go like that, yeah whatever, that'll do, and then I'm just going to cut back into it, like so, and that's just going to cut out a little piece of my R, and yeah that's actually pretty much it, then if you want your logo to have a circle around it with the spikes it's very simple you're gonna wanna resize this because it's a tad too big so you're just gonna have uh, or hit control, control T which allows you to free transform and now you can move it around and re resize it make sure that when you're uh, making this smaller see this is the big problem you don't want this to happen because it messes up the proportions so just hold shift and that makes sure uh, that you keep the proportions equal. So I'm just going to leave it to more or less that size. Then I'm going to do Control A. This selects everything. And then here I'm just going to center it just like that. I'm going to create a new layer beneath my logo and get a brush, a hard brush, and rather large. So make sure it covers the, I would say, the length. Or it goes all the way around your, your logo. That's too big. Let me see if I can get a decent size here. Uh, obviously, this is based on how big your. So, okay, let's say that I want some of this ends to stick out of the logo, which is going to be fine. You're just going to go ahead and click that. That's fine. Look at the size. So, let's say this is 544. You're going to go to your eraser. Make sure your opacity is on 100. Get a hard brush, and then I'm going to make it like 470 or something. See, that's too little. I'm just going to bring it down a little bit. There we go. Okay, and try to center it as much as you can, and then just clear that off. Now, you're, you're, this kind of looks kind of uh, dirty and doesn't look very good, so you're just going to turn down the opacity on the circle. That way you can see through it, and then using the polygonal lasso tool, you're just going to cut out the ends 
similar to the way we did on the logo itself. So let's do that. Like so uh, let's say the thing down here. Like that. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it because then it, it just comes down to your own imagination and how you can uh, do cool things with the logo. Another detail I like to add on my logos is um, indents. Like it wouldn't work well with this kind of style, but some people feel like they want more detail on their logos. So I like to cut into it. So I would go like this and I cut out little rectangles. Move down the select and then have the second one be bigger and then the third one be the smallest. Something like that. And uh, oh, and then if you want to make spikes on the circle, it's actually very easy. You essentially you just use your la your lasso tool. Well, this is how I do it. I mean, there's definitely other ways of doing it, but this has worked for me. So I'm just gonna click, hold shift, so you make a straight line, and click, and then try to center it as much as you can. And then just double click, and there you go. You've got a nice little triangle there. Make a new layer. Make sure you do that, and then Alt delete because it's my foreground color and then click uh, control D to deselect it and then just move it into place so it's actually very simple and uh, I enjoy making logos so I'll leave I'm gonna eventually make a gallery of all my logos that I've designed for customers etc so if you're ever interested in purchasing one uh, you can just hit me up on uh, Skype and or YouTube and yeah so let me just give you guys an idea of what this would look like make sure you keep everything nice and clean and I'll give you guys one last tip when you're when you're when you're completely done with your logo you wanna put uh, everything so you're gonna select everything in your logo and then control E to merge it and then you're gonna double click on it to go into your blending options just like that and then put a color overlay. I usually put a light gray, something actually like that. And then you want to go to inner shadow, and that gives a really nice effect on your logo, which I, I, I always use when I give to customers. And the inner shadow, you want to make sure the line is centered like that. And a drop shadow, of course, just turn down the opacity a bit though. And uh, that is pretty much it. So actually while we're here, I'm just going to show you guys how to make patterns in, in Photoshop, like a custom pattern. So you're going to do a very similar process. You're just going to make a new folder, 800 by 800. And let's say you want your background or something to have the pattern of your logo. So you're just going to put in your logo. Let's make it a bit smaller, like so. And then you're going to, let's say, rotate it because this is going to be randomized throughout your, your uh, wherever you decide to put this texture. You just want to put different duplicates of your logo, flip it around, just mess around with the rotation and stuff like that. Uh, there you go. And then once, you, once you're satisfied with the way you've placed your logo, I would recommend putting different sizes. So let's say you want to make this one bigger. Like so, yeah, stuff like that. And then when you're done, you want to go to Edit, Define Pattern, and then let's say Logo. Okay. And let me just bring in my, my background template. And let's say I want my background to have this uh, custom pattern on it. I'll show you how to apply it. So here we go on the background you're just going to double click it open up the uh, blending options go to pattern overlay you're gonna click on the pattern here and go to the very very bottom and you should find your your pattern right there see I've made one with my logo as well you're just gonna want to this is a bit too big so just turn the scale down just like that and then I would put snap to origin just to center it Usually I turn down the opacity, you just want to make it a minor detail, but you know, it, it makes the difference, it's just a detail that you might want to have. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to drop a like and comment because it always helps me out. 
And if you have any other um, ideas for tutorials you might want me to do, make sure to leave me a suggestion in the comment section. I always read all my comments, so yeah. Uh, also, I'm going to make a color correction tutorial soon. It's a very long tutorial, which is why I'm holding, I'm like holding back on it. But it'll come out eventually, so uh, be ready for that. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, stay active and stay sexy. Peace.